Students, today we are going to see a new topic called QSAR that is quantitative structure activity relationship that is here we are going to see how the structure is related to activity. Now we will see the uses of QSAR. It is used to identify and quantify the physicochemical properties of the drug. So what you are doing here, we are identifying and quantifying the physicochemical properties of the drug and to see whether these properties has effect on biological activity. So, by quantifying the physicochemical properties, we can calculate the biological activity of a novel drug in advance. So, from this, we can put efforts on the analogs, we should have improved activity and cut down the number of the analogs that has to be made. If an analog is discovered that does not fit the equation, it implies some other feature is important and provides a lead for further development. Now we will see the steps involved in QSAR. There may be three steps in QSAR. So first one is creation of a database in which the calculation of various physicochemical and structural parameters of congeneric series takes place. Second one is regression analysis that is leading to model development between biological activities versus physicochemical parameters. And the last one is validation of models and the prediction of biological activity of the designed compounds. Now we are going to see graphs and equations in QSAR. So here for this we have to prepare a range of compounds that is a set of compounds we have to synthesize. Why you have to synthesize the range of compounds to vary one physicochemical property. That physicochemical property you know that can be expressed as log p. And we are going to test how it affects the biological activity. This biological activity would be represented as log 1 by c. So here we are taking two things. One is the physicochemical property that can be called as log p and another one is biological activity that can be log 1 by c. Now we are going to draw a graph here the biological activity node that can be taken on y axis. So here so this would be y axis. So biological activity would be taken on y axis and the physicochemical properties know that can be taken on x axis. Now we have to draw the best possible line to the data points on the graph. This is done by a procedure called linear regression analysis by least square method. So what you have to do we have to draw the best possible line through the data points. So by means of a procedure called what is that linear regression analysis by least square method. So if we draw a line through the set of data points, so this is the line and the points are here. So this is the line and the points are here. So if you draw a line through this data point, most of the points would be scattered on either side of the line. So we have to find the best line. So which would be the best line? The best line will be the one that is closest to the data points. We have to measure that. So to measure how close the data points are, we have to draw vertical lines from each points. So what we have seen now, so we have to draw a best possible line through the data points by means of a procedure called linear regression analysis by least square method. So here what happens, this would be the line. So most of the, this would be the line. Okay. So most of the points would be scattered on either side of the line. So we have to find the best line. So what is the best line? That would be the one which is closest to the data points. To measure how close the data points are, we have to draw vertical lines from each points. So now we have drawn vertical lines. Now we have to measure these lines and we have to square that lines. Why we have to square that lines? To eliminate the negative values. Now we have to add these squares to give a total. So what is the best line? The best line would be the line where the total is the minimum. So the equation, we have known the equation for straight line that is y is equal to k1x plus k2 or y is equal to mx plus c. So here that k1 and k2 know they are constants. By varying these two constants we are getting different equations until the best line is obtained. This whole process know that can be done by using relevant softwares. The next stage is to see whether this relationship is meaningful. So for this we are using three parameters. One is a regression or correlation coefficient. Second one is standard deviation and the third one is Fisher F test. So in the case of uh, regression or correlation coefficient that can be represented by a small letter that is small r. It is a measure of how well the physicochemical parameters present in the equation explain the observed variance in activity. So for a perfect fit the r should be 1. So that is the observed activities would be the same as the calculated one but that is not possible. So the r values should be greater than 0.9. 
no that can be acceptable so this regression coefficient is represented as r square here the values over 0.8 no they are coming under good fit if this r square is multiplied by 100 it gives percentage variation in biological activity that is r square is equal to 0.85 means we are getting 85 percent of variation in biological activity by the parameter used in one is standard deviation that can be otherwise called standard error of estimate and can be represented as small s yes. ideally that should be zero but in reality that should be small but not smaller than the standard deviation of experimental data and the third one is fisher f test it is a statistical test and that is used to assess the significance of coefficients for each parameter in qsir equation Normally the p values derived from this test know that should be less than or equal to 0.05 if the parameter is significant. If it is not, the parameter should not be included in the QSIR equation. Here we said the p value know that is the probability of getting a result as extreme as the one that was actually observed.